First thing to do when working on the eyes is get in there with a brush and clean them. Remember when we put the paste in over the eyes for the cape, they were covered with paste. And if we get the paste off them now, while they're while the paste is still wet and we remove it, it's less to worry about later. Next thing I want to do, I want to take some paste. I want to put some of the paste down into the location of the eyelids. I want to get paste right behind the eyelids and on the clay. Take it off the eyelashes if it gets on there. I want to get paste under the eyelids. Otherwise, if there's no paste, you know, if the paste thinned, the paste thinned a little as the wet cape went on. And clay is not an adhesive. So you want this to adhere in place. I'll wipe this off just a bit. Some of it. Like so. Press this into contact here. And let's see. Let's get this here. All right. Get this modeling tool in here. One of the whole things is to taxi the skin into place, which means we bring it forward. You see it moving forward here just a bit. Get everything to line everything up where it needs to go. We want this lacrimal gland to enter the lacrimal opening that was made in the form and shaped with clay. I want to gently Press contact the eye, eyelids into their position on the clay. Bring the skin forward a bit. We go under here, under the upper lids. Make sure we're making good contact here. I want to make sure the lashes are pointing downward as they should be. A little uneven on this side here. Here we go. Let me bring this skin forward a bit more. Shape it into the front crease at the eye, the front of the eye. Manipulate the skin around. Bring the feeler hairs forward a bit. If we can get them to stand up on a mount, so much the better. Because on a live animal, the feelers are always alert. Very rarely do you see them folded flat back against the, the skin, as seen in so many mounts that don't bother with this detail. Uh, it's stand they're standing up beautifully now. Now let's get this lacrimal gland tucked. And for that I will use the flat end of this modeling tool, get it into place, get it in, make sure it all goes in. Follow the eye channel at the front. That lacrimal skin, you want that bare skin going in. Now the clay that was put in place will close over this, like so. And over the course of the next few days, the skin and the hair pattern will continue to be adjusted.
my finger to shape it. Get in there and clean the clay and paste off the glass eye. Now, remember I said the skin will tell the story of where the eyelid crease goes. This deer is not showing a whole heck of a lot. So I want to be very, very judicious and very careful about where I place it. I don't want it to look too big. So I'm going to give him a very, very, very little, very little crease. Just right along here, like so. I can see where there's a disturbance in the, in the hair pattern. And that's it, right there. That's all this little buck has. That's all he has to show for it, right there. Like so. Now we reshape the eyelid, bring the crease down, the eyelid crease down to the front. And you want to, now that gave him an angry eye from the front. Ooh, we don't want an angry eye. So we raise that a bit. And we have a nice eye happening here. Like so. Let me grab a brush real quick. And give him a light brushing over. Just a light brushing over. Now this is a air bubble. So we'll grab a three-cornered needle, a big three-cornered needle, pop the air bubbles under the skin that are forming under the skin. A little bit of brushing. We find an air pocket, we pop it. And you can see how the details are falling deep into this front area of the uh, of the face just ahead of the eye. Now I'm going to get this hair pattern even. Bring the hair up. Give a little expression over his brow. And I'm going to continue to work on this eye a little bit. Then I'm going to go to the other side. Then we'll show the tucking of the lips and the setting of the nostrils. And here's what we have from the front. Front view, I should say. Besides cleaning the eyes, a wet brush can go a long way in aiding to shape the eyes. And I'll tell you why. The brush is much softer than a modeling tool. The brush can help shape the lower and upper lids without a lot of distortion, as can happen if you're not careful with a stainless steel or a wooden modeling tool. Now, as the skin dries, it will pull down tighter to the clay that's been shaped, and you will get a more refined shape. But for right now, this is pretty good. For a wet, a wet head, this is really, really a nicely shaped eye. Now I'll see if I can't darken in these little epidermal slippage areas so you get a, a more clear version, a, a, a more clear view, I should say, of what exactly it is I have going on here. Now here is the eye from the front after a little fine tuning. And uh, just a little burnt umber oil paint to kind of blend everything together to give it a cleaner image than before. And here is the eye in profile. Again, a lot of fine tuning. 
and a little bit of burnt umber color added just to kind of tone it all together so you have a better way to look at it. Okay, one of the things I do in order to bring these feeler hairs forward, besides using just a modeling tool, I like to get in down at their roots with a needle and actually bring them forward by the roots. I don't recommend yanking on them or tugging, even gently, because even a gentle forward yank on the hairs can take can tear them out of the sockets. Don't forget, we thin these skins down a lot, a lot. Now, over the course of the first three or four days, this will need to be repeated because as the skin dries, it will have a tendency to pull them down. Now, you want to bring the feeler here forward and up in order to get them to stand. Going at the root, fo at the root, forward and up. You might have to adjust the skin here a little bit, but forward and up. Never grab them like this. I mean, this is easy, but they will very, very easily be yanked and pulled out of their sockets with with the littlest with the littlest um, prompting. You know what I'm saying? The smallest prompting can get them yanked out of their sockets. Okay, so here they all are. Bring them up, forward, and up, like so. And see, doesn't that look nice? Doesn't that look nice? Pretty, 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 pretty. The lower fewer hairs are handled in exactly the same way. Okay? Fewer hairs down here are handled exactly the same way. Get down there with a the needle into the root, lift and forward, forward and lift. A lot of times, too, if you just press in at the root, you can get them to stand on end, just like so, just like that. Believe me, the skin will pull down and it will dry. But if you, if you need to, just feel better about it, just go over with a, a wood modeling tool. You can soften the look on the skin again. Little tips like this will produce a most realistic deer. Okay. Leave us unwrap the face. Peel the schnozzle back over the clay. I'm going to add just a little more paste here. I want to be able to taxi the skin without any worries at all. I want the skin to move. The nice thing with this paste, very slick, allows the paste to move. Put a little bit on the inside. Just take it off my finger, and I got some on my finger, so I wiped it on the skin. And in it. Okay, now I've rolled out a little worm of clay, and I'm going to put that in the front of the lower lip. 
press it in, fold the skin over on itself, like so. Oops, let's get it in there. Need to pinch it off just a little bit. Just a little bit. There we go. Don't need a lot. In fact, this might be just a little too much. So I'm going to take some of it out. It's just a little long. Take some of that out of there. And we're going to prepare to turn the whole thing over. Start tucking the lips. First thing to do, preparation for tucking the lips, is to pull the muzzle back in place, back over, put it in place. I'm going to trim out the backs of these nostrils some. I'm going to grab it with a um, hemostat just to hold it. And we're just going to trim the back of the nostril skin. Like so. You see, it actually took that much off. It's quite a bit. Does not need to be there. And we'll trim a little bit of this away here, heading towards the back of the nostril. Even it off. There we go. Like so. Now that the nostril skins are trimmed, we're going to taxi the skin into place. That nice new layer of paste under the hide. Make sure everything lines up in a proper place. Nostril wings, edges of the nostrils on both sides, the left and the right. Just want to get everything lined up in its proper place. Make sure the skin has got plenty of stretch in these details. Make sure the hair patterns match up. There's this dark center stripe on him. It goes up the center. Let's pull this back here. All right. Now, adjust that hide a little more. Turn him upside down. Let's see, first I'm going to add just a little more paste in here. I'm just chewing his cud. A little cud chewer. Alright. Now we turn him over. Now that it's upside down on the mounting stand, first thing you need to do is taxi the skin around just a little bit. And make sure you work out any unwanted wrinkles unnatural wrinkles so that we can line everything up. I'm going to take my lip tucking tool, start tucking the lips. I'm going to start at the front. First thing I want to do well I think first thing I want to do, very first thing, is put just a little bit of clay into the lip slot. This is going into the front of the lip slot itself. Like so. Into the lip slot. Then a little bit of paste. Add some paste for taste. We get the skin lined up. Make sure the center of the nose pad, which is here, is in this, located at the center 
of the lip slot. I'm going to take my shortened lip tucking tool and start by tucking that in. Now, I'm going to go along toward the back, work my way toward the back. I'm going to stop about halfway. Now what you want to do, you want to get the inner lips tucked until you come up to the hairline, okay? Now you want to find the corner of the mouth, bring that to the corner on the lip slot, tuck the corner of the mouth in. And now you want to work the skin forward. Pop off excess hide paste. Bring the lip skin all together. See, after skinning and after tanning, as, within, as with many mammals, the skins tend to let out. And a deer cape will do the same. A deer cape will let out. And I'm going to use my longer lip tucking tool. Like so. Now the top lip is tucked. Just like so. I'm going to do the opposite side, and when I'm done, I'm going to come back and tuck the lower lips. Okay, and I'm going to come to, with the lower lips, I'm going to come to the front. Try and maintain that clay in the lip. Begin by bringing the lower jaw skin forward. I'm going to tuck the front lips first. I tuck the front lip skin first. What I want to do is straighten it out. I want to get my hair patterns straight, flatten out the skin, work out any undue wrinkles that can cause a problem. And we're going to get in there, I think with a modeling tool. Yeah. A smaller modeling tool. I'm going to get in here and get this lip skin and start carefully tucking it down. This is the inner lip skin. I'm getting in and I'm pushing it into the lip slot. Now we go back to the half length lip tucker. And we start tucking the heavier front lip skin. Now working along the sides. Really I'm I'm working the lip skin into the slot. Sort of walking it in. Now that could have been trimmed a little more, but It's going in as well. You tuck one side, then the other. And make sure our markings are centered. We continue to tuck the front lip skin. 
I want some showing, but I, do, I don't want a lot of that lower lip skin showing. Just enough. Just enough to make a difference, but I want it held in place. Don't forget the clay is in there to help hold everything down, as well as a hide paste. Now what I'm doing is, let me change this camera angle, I'll show you what I'm doing at the front lip. What I'm doing now, I've got the lip skin tucked. But what I'm doing now, that little bit of clay that's in there, I'm pushing from below, below the bare lip skin of the front. Push down and to actually create a lip roll. I say I don't want a lot of lower lip showing. I don't want too much showing. It probably will pull down some as well. Now remember all that soft clay that was on the nose pad? Or that I put in place on the nose pad. There's a reason for that. Right now, I'm starting to model it. Well, on camera it's being modeled up, but anatomically speaking, it's being modeled down toward the front of the lower lip. Now, with this my ha favorite handy dandy little modeling tool, I'm going to take the center cleft in the nose pad. And I'm going to accentuate that by pressing in. And the reason I can press in is because of the soft clay. Ha ha! See, there is method to the madness after all. Again, we roll that down. I want to create a nice, soft, rounded appearance. And then put that little cleft in the middle of the nose pad. Right there. I'm going to continue on tucking the rest of the lips. And what you're looking at is the lower lip going in from, you're looking at it from the front. I'm working that, that lip skin into the lip slot. Going in back at the corner, getting all that lip skin in. I don't want any internal lip skin showing on the outside. Now, the skin behind the lips needs to be taxied back and down upon itself. Remember that clay at the corner of the mouth. This is where that clay comes into play. And I'll demonstrate that when it's back in the upright position. All right. So now we're here. Now this is where the clay was modeled onto the rear corner of the mouth. Now, on this little particular buck, any little wrinkling of the skin in the corner of the mouth will show. So the wrinkles must be worked out. You work them out with a modeling tool. And you make sure you get the air bubbles out as well. Groom the hair. Groom the hair pattern. Now, the clay under the skin is modeled into position, manipulated around with your fingers. Use your fingers. You can see I'm creating the corner of the mouth here. It's very, very subtle. All right? It's not a big detail. It's very subtle, but it, it is there. That's the main thing. It is, in fact, there. And that clay will help to keep details in place. 
Right now I'm moving some feeler hairs into position. Making sure I'm working out all wrinkles at the rear corner of the mouth. Don't forget, you've got a convergence of the deer's hide in this place. And there are strong details under the form at this point. Now we've got some, I've got a air pocket forming right here. Puncture that with a three-cornered needle. Press the air out. And you can see my finger bringing out the details in the face. <clears throat> Our short-haired animals such as this, some folks like to extend the detail that's, in, that's sculpted onto a mannequin. But unless the deer has got short enough hair, and doing that will be accentuating phony details. Now you recall when I when I did the clay work, I made sure to not soften or dull the detail of the facial muscles that are that are sculpted into the form. Now they show. <clears throat> I did not exaggerate them in any way. This little buck with his fine coat of, of hair and thin skin is allowing the details to show through. And the Pro One hide paste, as it dries, it has been explained, and I've been able to prove it in specimens that have been mounted with it. It will draw the skin down tight to the form. Doesn't matter if it's a life size or a head or what have you. And now it's time to situate the nostrils, get them placed. That's what I'm working on now. I'm getting the skin into position for the next step. Now what I do, I get the modeling tool, put it up under the nose skin, and help bring it along into position. And take my tech bond. I still like using super glue for this part. Put the tech bond on the tip of the modeling tool. Get the modeling tool in and apply it to the mannequin. And just a little bit on the skin, on the inside of the nostril skin. The parts I'm gluing down first, like so. And the underside of the top of the interior of the nostril. Now, it's going to get placed. I begin at the rear corner or the rear end of the nostril. Then I start working the skin in all around. It's not an instant bond. So you do have some time to manipulate the skin. You want to get up under the upper nostril detail. You want to get that skin in there. You want to get the skin in at the top section. You want to manipulate the hide into place around the outside of the nose. Get this interior nostril 
skin secured in its proper location. And you know that by having your photo references available. Use them. If you have them, don't just collect them. They're not baseball cards. Use them. We need to bring the skin up on the nose pad. We need to bring that skin up and further push the nostril skin in at this point. Bring the nose pad skin up higher on its location. Remember that soft clay in there. That will help you form a nice soft round edge. Get up under the nostril. I'm going to get the skin properly located and situated, seated in the proper place. Shape the nostril opening with your finger or modeling tool. All right, I say we've got that pretty good right now. We got a little piece of skin that needs to be pushed down. There we go. We have a nice teardrop shape for the nostril. I'm going to do this on the other side. All right, at this point in time, I'm just going to go ahead and press the, the hide, the facial details into place. I'm going to brush the hair in the correct direction it needs to go. Now, around the antlers, there's a hair pattern. It goes from the front toward the ear. Then there's like a seam, as I was speaking about a little seam of hair on the ear butts. There's a seam of hair right about the center of the antlers between the ear and the front of the antler bar. Make sure that's in position. I want to get the hair all brushed into place properly. I want to make sure my hair patterns are all correct. Check for air bubbles. Now this is the kind of thing that needs to be done to it several times a day for the first three or four days I do this. Also for the first several days I grab a needle and I keep working the feeler hairs. Forward and up, forward and up. Same thing with the feeler hairs under the lower lid. Forward and up, forward and up. There are feeler hairs all over. We lose a lot during the flushing process. The only way not to is to do as I do with the whiskers on cats, and canids, and dogs, wolves, coyotes, that kind of thing, foxes. And that would be to pluck them, put them down on a, um, a piece of card, and label what side they go on and their location. Now, with the whiskers on a cat, or a lion, or you know, the, the, the feline animals, that makes sense. I'm sure there are some guys who do that with deer, maybe, I don't know, I don't know. Um, 
it to, for me it's just as easy to go ahead and try and shave around the face carefully not cut the roots however they will they will be cut we will lose some but for those that remain I like to tend to them very carefully At this point, I'll come along and I'll resituate the lacrimal glands, make sure the skin is laying correctly. Press that clay that's, that I put underneath, press that into place. Be sure there are no strong seams or wrinkles. One of the things to do is to bring the skin forward on the bottom at the location of the lacrimal gland, press down the top and the clay, come over the modeling tool, make sure the skin is smoothed. Now at this point, I'm going to put a bag over his head and suffocate him. No. I'm going to put a bag over his head to slow down the drying, at least for the first day. It's just going to fit loosely over the entire head, not a big deal, right over the top of the antlers, like so. It's going to fit loose. I'm not going to lock out the air. I'm simply, as I said again, I'm simply loosely fitting the bag over the deer's head and it will be like this for the first day or two. I mean I will come back and work it. This is the bag that the capes come back in from the tannery. There we go. I've turned him into the little boy deer in a plastic bubble. That could be a movie at any rate. He'll stay like this for a few hours today. I'll come back and check on him, make sure everything is going well, repress the details into the, into the form, and then I'll go down to the back and staple the back of the skin to the backboard after it's trimmed.